We're approaching Be'ez Hashem, the new year, Elul, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, big time on the calendar. Let's take a positive approach to the new year. The following incident took place. A person noticed somebody walking towards the Besak Forest, the cemetery, and on his shoulder was a stone. And he was walking very definitely in the direction of the cemetery, and he decided to follow him slowly behind to see what this guy was doing. Yep. He went into the cemetery and he dug a hole and he sunk the stone into the hole and covered it over. Very interesting. The man left the cemetery and he couldn't hold himself back. What on earth is this man doing? And he went later into the cemetery and uncovered the stone. And on the stone he saw was written, Here I am burying the year Tovshin Einches. The man had gone to bury the year. The second man turned the stone over. And he wrote on it, here I hereby lay the foundation stone of Tovshin Aintes. What does that mean? Am I looking at the past or am I looking to the future? The Posuk says, Me Rishis Hashono Ad Achris Shono. Note, it says Mereshis Hashono Ad Achris Shono. Doesn't say Hashono the second time. Why? The answer is given Hashono means the year. Mereshis Hashono, if a person approaches the year and he says Hashono, this is going to be the year, then Achris Shono, then the year will be a shono. If a person starts off the year saying, yeah, it'll be a shono, then his year won't even be that. One has to start, and when we approach the new year, we have to approach with a feeling of ha shono. This is going to be the year. It's interesting that wherever it says v'hoyo, which means and it will be, a future tense, that is a lotion of simcha, of happiness. Wherever it says vayhi, like vayhi b'meach ha-shverish, vayhi, it was, that's a lotion of tsar, of pain. Interesting. V'hoyo is the future. If we look to the future and feel I'm going to make it. This year is going to be the year. That's Simcha. If a person thinks to himself, what did I do already with my year? What, what am I worth? What have I done? That's Tsar and that's not good. We're looking to the future to build. The story is told of an Avrich, a young man, who came to Rabbi Aaron Leib, Zichroinu Levrocha, and he said to him that he lives in France, and he lives in a building together with Gentiles, and they live very happily together. There's no problem. Everything's fine. And his neighbor told him that he is a son-in-law of the Persian king. And sometimes his father-in-law, the king, comes to visit. So he said to his neighbor, do me a favor. 
the next time the king comes, please let me know. We have a special blessing to make on a king. If your father-in-law comes, I would like to meet him and I would like to make this blessing. I would like to make this brocha. So, a couple of months later, it happened to be just before he was making a bar mitzvah for his, for his son. His neighbor knocks on the door and says to him, Tomorrow, my father-in-law, the king, is going to be by me. And you're invited. You're invited to come in. He got his whole family dressed in their Shabbos clothes, including, of course, the bar mitzvah boy. And they went to deliver an invitation. An invitation to the king of Persia, to the bar mitzvah. They came in and the king greeted them and he asked what's a bar mitzvah and they told him that there's a Torah, it was given by Sinai and we tried to keep it and when a boy becomes 13 he comes of age and then he has to start doing all the commandments and we make a celebration around his 13th, 13th birthday. The king was fascinated. He said, bring me my checkbook. He wrote out a check, $50,000. This is for the bar mitzvah. The father of the boy stood there and said, your honor, my king, we didn't come here to receive presents. We came to honor the king. And such a present, such a big present, Said the king, I don't often get the chance to give somebody a birthday present, a bar mitzvah present. And when I give, I give on a standard of the king. A king giving a present. I don't want to and I can't give less. When he said this over to Rabbi Aaron Leib, he said that he understood from there, from that story, the Loshan which we say when we pray during the davening Rosh Hashanah in Kippur, we say, Asay Leman Shemecho. Please, Hashem, do in your name, do for us in your name. What does it mean, Leman Shemecho? On your standards, on what Hashem knows how to give. That's Asay Leman Shemecho. When we pray, we're not supposed to pray for small things. We're supposed to open our eyes and open our hearts and pray on a level of Asay Leman Shamecho. Akash Baruch, you know how to give. Give me, Be'ez Hashem, give me according to how you understand. The Posuk, which we say in the Dovet Hashem Oiri, which is said from Rosh Chodesh El right through. Lucho oma libi bakshuponai esponecho Hashem avakesh. Says Rashi, I'll quote Rashi. Kishushomea koil bifnim, when a person hears an inside voice calling, a baskoil. Shoimaloi lihiskarv la kodesh brochu. And that voice tells him, get near, come near to Hashem. Esponecho avakesh. Oz has Rashi, Tishma la When you hear that voice, listen out for it and do accordingly. Get close to Hashem. That's what we're looking for. Pray on a Melech's idea of what to give. But when you hear your heart calling saying, Let's get near, let's be macabre, let's get myself closer to Hashem. Listen to it and go accordingly. I will then seek Hashem. I will seek to be closer to Hashem. This time of the year, this month, this 40 days, there's a special, special help from above. 
HaKadosh Baruch Hu helps a person to come closer. I'm reminded of a story of a group of young men who moved to a new area and they needed a shul and they cleared an area of ground and till they managed to build a shul that's going to take years but we still need a shul so they arranged that they're going to get some type of caravan a portable building to be lifted and lowered into this area and that's going to be their shul they asked the young men to be there when the crane arrives to help to get the caravan exactly in the right position and that's exactly what happened they lowered the caravan in place and they fixed it to the ground and the crane moved off they opened the doors of the caravan and they noticed that by mistake they'd put the caravan the wrong way around the Oran HaKodesh was in the Ma'ariv side instead of the Mizrach. So one of the young men said, as the crane was lowering it, we were able to get the caravan to fall in the right place. What's the problem? Let's swing it round now. We have something else. We have the mitzvahs that we've done. Shoifa. All the mitzvahs we did on Yom Kippur. Lulav. Sukkah. Esrug. Hishanais. We have plenty. All this we say to Hashem. Please remember it. But, says the Nesiva Shalom, an amazing understanding, deep understanding over here. There's the lev, there's the heart of the person, and there's the zarachor, there's the arm, there's the doing. They have to be in contact with each other. One has to be acting. Your maizim, your deeds, have to be in line with where your heart is holding. They have to be together. It has to be kachosom. What's a chosom? A chosom is a stamp. When two people make a deal with each other, they sign and they stamp it. The heart and the arm are making here a deal with each other. Heart is going to go with the arm and the arm is going to go with the heart. And we're going to do things together. When we think about Ashana Rabba, this is one of the thoughts. That what we think and what we want for ourselves is not only going to be left libecho, it's not only going to be left in the heart. It's going to be together with Zaracho, with the arm doing, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something in a way that it'll be join the heart and the arm together. Two friends, Yedidim, Yedid Nefesh, they are friends, lifelong friends, but really good friends. And it came the time that they had to part company. They both said to each other, we will stay in contact. We'll keep in contact. You're going your way, I'm going my way, but the contact is still going to be there. What is the contact could be? The contact could be Belev, a heart connection. Pick up the phone, be in contact. We'll still talk to each other. What's the other connection? Arm, I'll do for you. I'll be in this side of the country. You'll be on this side of the country. If you ever need me to do something for you, I'll be there for you. And I'll be there for you. Again, we have come to, hopefully, a level of we are 
nearing and becoming more a Yedid of Hashem. But when we look to the coming year, we want to say to Hashem, look what we've done with our Libecho, and look what we've done with our Zarecho, with our Maisim, with our deeds. We want to stay Yedidim. We want to stay in contact. We want to still be davening all the way through the year. And we still want to be doing the good deeds, the maisim, the mitzvahs, and we want to be in, in connection with you, Hashem, all the way through the year. Like I said, the Posuk ends. Ki azo kamoves avo. Kamoves, death, love. The love is so strong like death. I would have thought death is the end of the road. What does it mean, ki azo kamoves avo? Let's stop for a minute. We all took a lulav, an esrug, adasim, and arovas, and Chazal tell us the famous thing: the esrug has a tam, has a taste, and a reach, and a nice smell. The lulav, the dates. They have a nice taste, but they don't have a nice, necessarily have a nice, a reach toiv, a nice smell. The hadasim, they do have a reach, a nice smell, but there's no taste. And the arovo, as we all know, has, doesn't have no taste and no reach. And our chazal tell us, our rabbis tell us, that the tam refers to Torah. The taste is Torah. And the reach, the smell, is the maisim toivin, the mitzvahs and the maisim toivin the person does. And therefore the esrug is the man who has Torah and maisim toivin. And the lulav, which has the tam and not the reach, is the Torah without the maisim toivin. And the Hadassim, which has a nice smell, but does not have taste. That's the Maisim Toivim, the mitzvahs, but without Torah. And then we have the Arova, which is without no Tam and no Reach, which means no Torah and no mitzvahs. And what do we do with all these four? We tie them all together. We bring them all together. Klal Yisrael brings everybody, no matter what standard they are, no matter where they're holding, whether they're the Esrug or whether they're down to the Arova, we tie them Ba'agudu Achas in one tie. We are all B'nai Hashem. We're all the children of Hashem. And we do the mitzvah and we say to Hashem, look at us all together. Klal Yisrael has a beauty that everybody can join together whatever level they're holding and that is what is being said and that is what we're symbolizing when we shake the lulav and the estric. Comes a Shana Rabba, and suddenly we take just the Arova. Interesting. The whole week we've had everything tied together and we'll be thinking about the Achtus and we'll be thinking about the unity. Comes this great day, this great, great day, Hoshana Rabba. And we take the Hoshana and we take the Arova and we take it by itself. What's it saying? The Arova, as we said, is. Ein loy reach ve ein loy tam. It has no smell, it has no pleasant smell, and it has no taste. And we're saying to Hashem, it's true, we're trying. We're going up, we're trying to get close to you, Hashem. But we realize anything we've done, anything we've done for you, we remain as an Arova. We are. Ein tam ve ein reach. However much I do for you, Hashem, is never going to be enough. 
I look at myself as a rover. I don't have enough Torah and I don't have enough Maisim Toivim. And I beg you, Hashem, Moshana Rabba, please listen to my tefillah and please give me life. Please grant me, myself, my family, Klal Yisrael, v'chosmeinu, tell us, give us the, give us the chasima, give us the chasima of Chaim. Why? I haven't got a reason why. I take the Arova, which Arova is ein letam, ve'ein le'reach, no Torah, and no mitzvahs of Maisen Tovim. And I beg of you, Hashem, please, Give me a matna schinom. Give me a present for nothing. I'm not deserving. But Hishana Rabba, please Hashem. That is what Hishana Rabba is. Maybe that's what it means. Ki azo ka moves avo. Moves is the end. I have nothing. My love to you to Hashem, I say, I have nothing. I'm starting from start, reset. Why should I get it? Matnas chinom. A present for no reason. I want to get close to you. I want to draw near to you, Hashem. Hashanah Rabba is a time when we can think about this is the matanas chinom. But, one small thing. All on one understanding. I took the arova, but I took the arova after it was tied together with everybody else. I'm not looking at myself as an individual. I'm coming from something called the Jewish nation. Am Yisroel, B'nai Yisroel, the children of Hashem. The Arova, which we said, symbolizes what have I got, Matnas Chinom, but I had one thing. I was part of the group. I was joined with Klal Yisrael a whole week. They shook the Luluv, Esther, everything together. Interesting, the Arova grows by the side of a river. It's thirsty. It's thirsty for water. Ein Maim El this arova, which ain't no reach, but ain't no tam, but it has a thirst. It has a thirst for more. It has a thirst for water. It has a thirst for Torah, and it wants to. It wants to do good. It wants to learn, and it wants to do my simtavi. The Gemara in Sukkah, very interesting Gemara. On Hoshana Rabba, Hoshana Rabba, they used to take a arova, a arova and they used to stand it on the side of the Mizbeach. The height of this arova was Yud Alef Amo, 11 Amas high. The Mizbeach itself had a height of 10 Amas. The arova went up the side of the Mizbeach and the Amo, top Amo, the 11th Amo, was bending over, over the Mizbeach. They put this Arova next to the Mizbeach on Hoshana Rabba. Says Reb Tzodok HaKoyen, a fascinating explanation. He says that we bring Torahs in the Mithamiktosh. Keturus creates a beautiful smell. Note, says Rabbi Tzodok HaKoyen, that the Keturus has 11 different types of spices that are put into it to make it the Keturus. One of them is called Chelbono. Chelbono it does not have a nice smell. The opposite. But we still put it in because we're giving ourselves a message. We're saying we're joining the whole of the Bnei Yisrael, the Jewish nation, together. 
were 11, even though there could be Chelbono, there could be people who are like our Rova, who ain't the town, they ain't the reach, they don't have that, that privilege of the Torah and the Mice and Tovim behind them. We join them in. They're part of us. They're part of the Jewish people. Says Rotodek HaKohen, that is the Amor bending over. That is the 11th Amor, that's the Chelbono. That's those people who will eventually join and move forward to the Mizbeach, move forward to Hashem, just because they were looked at and they were joined in to this wonderful thing called the Jewish nation. I would like to say maybe one small point. When we're looking and we're standing, let's call it at this point, it's a peak. It's the top of a, of a hill. We climbed up slowly. We got lifted up slowly. We're holding at some height. And we're looking to the future. And we're trying to look for something, make something small, a small idea. What am I going to do in the next year? Maybe, since we're saying that Hoshana Rabbah is a matnas chinom, is a present, a free present, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is giving out on Hoshana Rabbah, I'm giving it for free. So what? Listen to what Chazal say. Our rabbis tell us, HaKadosh Baruch Hu built the world with many, many midas, with many, many attributes. One of them is left. One of them is still active in the world, says the Midrash. The middah of middah keneged middah. If you do kindness, Sakosh Baruch will do kindness to you. If you are looking at your friend in a positive manner, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will look at you in a positive manner. Mido keneged mido. Like you deal, like you associate yourself to Hashem, Hashem will, Be'ezrat Hashem, will associate Himself with you. We said that Hashan Rabbah is a time of matnas chinom. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is giving us a present for free. Let us give back Midah Keneged Midah. Let us give back to Hashem also a present. Bechinam, the free. What could be our present to Hashem which could be a Matnas Chinom? Why not? Let's think about you see your friend and you say to him, have a good day. That's a bracha, that's a blessing. You never know how far that blessing could go. Have nachas from your children. Who knows? A word that a person says. Have a long life. And the list goes on. Try and say nice things. Bless your friend. Who am I? What's my blessing? You never know. If it comes from the heart and it's sincere, it's very powerful. How many times do we have, let's take an example, we have somebody goes to be a chazan in shul. He davens Shabbos morning in shul. How many times do we ever go over to that person and say to them, thank you, that was beautiful. That was the only Shabbos, I enjoyed that. Why? Why should I give him that pleasure? Why should I bless him? Why? Mat I received from Hashem on a Shana Rabbah, life, 
Why? For nothing. Let me pay back. Let me pay back. Bless your friend. Have a good day. Be matzliach. A small thing. Everybody on their level. But when we look to the future, we do want to take something with from this Hashanah Rabbah. Something which will take us through the year. And will keep on reminding us, I had that uplift. I was at a certain point lifted Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur and Aser Sumei Tshuva. Just one more point. There's a marshal, a parable of a king who had a son who wasn't doing so well and the king was upset and he was upset with his son and he had no choice and he had to send him away from the palace and he sent him to a farm and that's where he'll have to be he's not fitting for the house of a king he's not fitting for the house of where there's malchus and the kingdom I have to send him away but every so often he sent somebody to go and see how his son is doing what's going on is he okay is he doing okay does he need anything and one day one of the messengers came back and he said that my lord, my master, I went to the farm and I saw your son and I asked him if he needs anything and he said yes and he said he needed a pair of boots. He works on the farm, it's hard for him, he needs boots and the Melech thought to himself Wow, he needs boots. He could ask, please let me come home. Please let me come back to the palace of the king, to my father. Let us just make sure that we think and we daven for the future. And what we're davening for shouldn't be that we're davening for boots. We can daven for great things. We have the power, we have the power of Tvila, and we have the power of the Maisim Tevin that we have done. Let's take that all together. Let's look at the Matnas Chinom. Let's appreciate every day of life is a present straight from the Almighty. And let's look around how we can do things, not because I have to, because I want to, because I want to give I received a present for nothing. I would like to also be giving for nothing. Have a very good Yontuf and a very happy Yehbe'ez Hashem.